Activated sludge, feed activated sludge to the waste stream, and it helps break down um, the nitrogen into, uh, well, might need to hold that thought for a second because it's a two-step process, so. Cut. <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> I'm Andrew Boulay, uh, Supervisor of the Water Pollution Control Division. Uh, today we're going to take a quick tour of the treatment plant and show you how it works. So this is the pre-treatment building. This is the first step of the treatment process. Um, after collection, like I mentioned, we have 55 miles of sewer around town, 27 pump stations, and it all ends up here at the treatment plant at the pre-treatment facility. Uh, looking up here, you have a um, automatic bar screen, which there's a, a screen up top where all the flow carries right through the screen and the screen will automatically rake out all the rags and debris that will build up on the screen over time. It rakes every 15 minutes. Um, also up there is an aerated grit chamber where we get rid of all the uh, inorganic materials, uh, sand, grit, that type of debris. What we do in this step is basically remove physical solid particles from the waste stream before we move into biological treatment. And then the flow will kind of come out this way underneath here, sampling port for uh, sampling our influent. And then underneath here is a flow meter where we measure our incoming flow. And then after that, it'll flow right out of this channel over here and into a primary clarifier. This is a primary clarifier. It's a rather simple device where anything that can float to the top will float to the top and get captured within this upper ring. And this rake arm will slowly make a revolution and push everything into the scum hopper here where it gets pumped over to our solids handling building, thickened and removed. Um, also what you can't see is what's going on at the bottom of the tank where all the sludge is settling to the bottom of the tank slowly and there's another scraper arm at the bottom of the tank that's moving things along and pushing it through a, a, a hopper at the bottom of the tank where it also gets pumped out and removed. All of that dirty water that we collected off the primary clarifier, which now is the grit, debris, scum, and sludge removed from it, is flowing into this distribution box where we're actually adding what they call activated sludge. Uh, activated sludge is essentially microorganisms and bacteria that occur naturally in nature, but we have them here in bulk and we feed them oxygen and wastewater and they treat the wastewater for us. What's going on right now is we're, we're blowing air into it um, and we're trying to maintain a dissolved oxygen set point of 2.0 here. So if you keep enough oxygen, basically what you're doing, there's an oxidation reaction here, which is converting ammonia nitrogen, which is NH4, into nitrate nitrogen, which is NO3. Um, at which point we then recycle it back around to the front of the tank where we cut the oxygen off. The microbiology, the bacteria will then attack the oxygen off the nitrate molecule, NO3, and essentially respirate it into nitrogen gas and H2O. So it's a two-step process that goes on out here. There's nitrification and there's denitrification. So we take that ammonia-rich wastewater, which has ammonia nitrogen in it, we oxidize it into nitrate nitrogen, and then we, we cut the oxygen off and then there's a reduction reaction which reduces the nitrate into nitrogen gas and H2O. We really like to target nitrogen because nitrogen can be considered a coastal pollutant for embayments and saltwater environments. So by taking nitrogen out of the water, you're reducing the nutrient load into the area, um, which can cause overgrowth of algae and blooms. Essentially, by taking the nitrogen out of the water, you're preventing eutrophication from taking place and receiving waters, cleaning up the embayments for our own personal enjoyment and fishing and swimming and all those type of things. So this is a secondary clarifier. This is the next, next step after aeration. So everything from aeration will flow into the center column where all of that sludge, the activated sludge, will slowly settle out and be pumped off the bottom of the clarifier. So there's two, two things we do with the sludge from the bottom of the clarifier. We either return it, it's called return activated sludge, where we send it back to aeration to reseed the aeration basin or waste activated sludge. Because uh, the activated sludge will reproduce over time, we have to cull the population 
periodically and, and waste it to get rid of it. So um, we'll send the waste activated sludge from the bottom of the clarifier to the solids handling building where we'll then thicken it and uh, send it out for incineration. So this is a sludge blanket reader. So essentially what we want to do here is we want to make sure uh, or just verify the level of the sludge blanket within the clarifier. So we take this thing, it's called the sludge judge. We dip it right down to the bottom and we lift it right back up. And that way we can see the sludge level in the clarifier. So in this case, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, about six and a half feet before you hit the sludge blanket level. So the, the things that you like really don't want to see here is you don't want to see that sludge blanket level coming up. If it does come up too high, we'll put another clarifier on to give some more settling time. Um, but that's kind of our job is to maintain uh, the sludge, sludge level here. That shouldn't get too high. Um, but there, we also have to keep an inventory so we can re return it to the aeration basin. Kind of like the way I like to put it with aeration at least is like we're kind of maintaining their environment. So if this sludge gets too old, we need to pick up the wasting schedule. If it's too young, we need to back off a little bit and let it get a little older because there's an optimal range of sludge age that gives you the best level of treatment. So um, the major control for that is how often we're wasting the waste activated sludge off the bottom of this clarifier. So this building is called the septage building. We also refer to it as the solids handling building. Uh, this is basically the guts of the wastewater treatment plant. It's where uh, we, we process all of our sludge. So there's three types of sludge that come in. There's septic waste, septic sludge. There's primary sludge from the bottom of the primary clarifier. And then there's waste activated sludge from the aeration process after it settles in a secondary clarifier. So that stuff gets processed here. It gets pumped into large holding tanks underneath my feet. Uh, where it then gets degridded through a degridding process, and then it gets thickened uh, through a gravity belt thickener, which is basically a porous belt that you pump the wastewater, or you pump the sludges onto the belt. The, through gravity, the water will escape. There's little chicanes that redirect the sludges back and forth to help dewater it. It falls into another collection tank where we then pump it off site for incineration. So this last stage is the chlorine contact chamber. This is the disinfection stage of treatment where we are adding a little bit of chlorine to disinfect our treated effluent uh, before it gets disposed of back into the groundwater. From here, it'll flow into a, a large collection tank, which we refer to as a wet well, uh, and through some effluent pumps, and it'll get pumped out underground to the waste, or to, to the sand beds for, for disposal. We are in one of what we call a rapid infiltration bed. Uh, or a sand bed. Which, this is where our highly treated effluent is disposed of and it percolates back into the groundwater. I think there's a little bit of a misconception out there that we're disposing of dirty water into the ground over here, but that's not the case. It's actually very clean, highly treated uh, water that percolates back into the groundwater. With Cape Cod being a sole source aquifer, you know, the, the, the care that we take with our water becomes even more important. Um, so we don't have a river that's feeding water to us from another area. I mean, what we have here is, is basically what we have and we have to take good care of it. So 